Right, uh, you can probably guess from the image that's in the background here what we're going to be talking about today. Well, the subject, the general subject matter. Um, yeah, Ocean Gate and the Titan thing. Uh, there's an enormous number of videos about it at the moment. Um, there were a whole bunch that came out when uh, when the thing happened, which was uh, which was about a year ago, and then there's been a bunch more which have come out since the uh, since the U.S. Coast Guard's hearings have happened, which is an awful lot of inf interesting information came out as part of those. Now, every man and his dog has been doing an Ocean Gate video, um, and a lot of them have been absolute fucking bollocks um, as much bollocks as some of the uh, some of the original videos that came out when the when the thing sank including the stuff where, where they had um, uh, pretend uh, pretend text logs and all that sort of stuff um, yeah and all those really shit implosion things anyway a couple of these cropped up on my uh, on my feed one of which was by a guy who is a professional diver. And it seemed to me that that might be a reasonable place to get some information which nobody else is really covering. So I gave it a look. And surprise, surprise, absolute fucking dog shite. Um, now, a diver could in theory go through the the sort of dive protocols that they use compare them to the dive protocols that have come out as part of ocean gates work the kind of inspections that they do on their equipment compared to the kind of stuff that has come out about what ocean gate did with their equipment and it's scratched on that in his third video but his first two videos were about how the submarine submarine itself was built and um, he was throwing about uh, words like incompetence, negligence. I mean, the amount of negligence involved is just astounding. This is complete neg negligence, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, not good. Especially when you consider that uh, everything that he has said, almost which wasn't just you know, a straight copy-paste from, uh, from what people who really know what they're talking about have been saying, was bollocks, incompetence, bollocks. There are a number of people who should probably keep their fucking mouths shut when they don't know what they're talking about. And this is one of them. Um, I'm also one of them. I don't know nearly enough about uh, the design of submersibles. To, uh, to be able to really comment on the design of this particular submersible, except to say that it doesn't seem to have been done according to the, the rules of the art, as you might say. Um, I don't know enough about uh, composite layup to really talk about the way the composite was laid up. There you go. Um, I don't know enough about the dive protocols. Um, but there are some things that I do know, and those things are generally based around physics. And so I'm going to criticise this guy's video, and we're going to have a look at a bit of it. And we're not going to be talking about this thing. Um, are we there? Yeah, th this thing up here. Um, how it was built. And we're not going to talk about this thing up here, how they used it in dives. Or this thing up here how they used it, uh, how they transported it, or any of that stuff. Uh, what we're going to talk about is implosions. Now, the implosion appears to have happened. Um, I don't know whether, whether my mouse pointer is going to show up here. Probably not. Um, the implosion appears to have been triggered around the front ring of the, uh, of the Ocean Gate uh, submersible at something of the order of 300 atmospheres of pressure, if I remember correctly, um, a long way down. Um, uh, sort of happened around the around the glue joint in the front ring is what it seems to be uh, seems to be showing up. Um, 
that's something that actually uh, only one video when the accident happened kind of showed up as being as being likely. Uh, that was Matt Hudson's uh, thing. He did a, he did a SolidWorks simulation and looked at the stress in the yeah yeah and pointed exactly to where it appears to have gone wrong. But that's by the by. Um, so implosions. What are implosions? They're a bit like explosions, really, um, except in reverse. That's where there's an enormous pressure differential, or a fairly large pressure differential, and uh, they equalise in a very, very sudden manner. Now, um, there's a demonstration that a lot of people will have seen, either in person or on video, um, which is where we heat up a barrel and cause it to implode. And this is what your man is talking about. So we'll bring this up with a bit of luck. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to SSP Diving. I just want to thank you all for the incredible questions on the last video. So this was his second video. The first video was absolute tripe. Um, this is yeah, his second video. And so he's going to talk about what he does. He's a diver. And we'll talk about you know, blah, 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 ocean gate, blah, blah, blah. And here we go. Right, okay, we're going to get into this. So I'm going to let him rip. Let's go. Let's go if I can find this play button. Thanks. I'll start a series. And well, that video hit over a thousand likes so far, and it's time to continue our investigation into this Ocean Titan tragedy. Okay, so some of you guys may remember Bill Nye the Science Guy. Well, this is a demonstration that I saw when I was a kid, and it always stuck with me. So inside of this barrel, there's just a little bit of water here at the bottom and there's a small opening here at the top. So all of that water is boiling, it's creating a lot of steam, it's creating a lot of internal pressure. Bollocks. Right, what's happening here is that this barrel is open at the top. It's got a little bit of water in it and it's being heated. It's being heated quite, uh, quite significantly so that the water boils. That water boils, creates steam, and the steam displaces the air from the barrel. And you can see the steam coming out of the top of the barrel if uh, once once the video kind of starts moving. Um, there is no pressure; it's open. So, well, there is possibly some pressure, a little tiny bit over atmospheric pressure, but there is no real pressure being created because it's an open system. What's happening is the displacement of air by water vapor. Now, water vapor is about one thousand five hundred times less dense than water. So what we're doing is we're filling this up with, what is it, it's a 20 gallon drum, isn't it? 20 gallon, 40 gallon drum, I don't know. Um, don't even know what gallons are these days, really. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a big old drum, and we're filling it up with water vapor and displacing all of the air. And that is all going to be at roughly one atmosphere of pressure. So let's carry on. So he's going to go ahead and cap off that barrel and place it inside of this ice water. Now, as you can imagine, what do you... Yeah, so we cap off the barrel and we create a closed system. Closed system with water vapor inside it and hopefully pretty much only water vapor. Then he's going to dunk it in the water. Now, let's see what we can what we can maybe imagine. What he has here is a propane heater. So he's heating up inside of this 55 gallon steel drum that oh, 55 gallons propane heater pressure is going to try and equalize to the temperature around it so what the pressure is going to try and equalize to the temperature around it absolute word salad bullshit when that barrel cools it's going to essentially implode and we're going to Yes, when the barrel cools, it is going to implode. Do we know why it's going to implode? Let's see whether he's going to explain that to us. To get an idea of what happens during an implosion. Ah, okay, so we're just going to get an idea of what's going to happen during an implosion. So what happens is the barrel goes in the water and we cool down the barrel. It doesn't need to happen rapidly, um, but it makes for a much more exciting demonstration. You could just leave it to cool down overnight. Um, the barrel itself is at about 100 degrees, 
the water vapour in it is there and what happens is when we cool the barrel down any water vapour that is in contact with the outside of the barrel will reduce in temperature. By forcing it to reduce in temperature it will condense um, and when it condenses it reduces in volume. It reduces in volume by about 1500 times. And so what happens is that as the temperature drops less and less water vapour and more and more water are in the barrel and the pressure is dropping and dropping and dropping until we reach an equilibrium. Um, the pressure will eventually drop to something very very low but outside we still have one atmosphere of pressure. Um, in uh, freedom units that's 14 pounds per square inch of pressure acting inwards on the barrel and there is far less pressure acting outwards on the barrel by the remaining water vapour. So there's a net inward force and that will cause the barrel to collapse. Now because the barrel has a circular structure once that structure is compromised by starting to collapse, starting to fall, it's effectively the only thing that's holding it together at the moment is the structure of the barrel. Um, so effectively, that structure ceases to exist and all of the atmospheric air goes in like that. Um, and that happens at the speed of sound. It happens at the speed of sound in the surrounding medium, which for air at uh, normal temperature and normal pressure is about 300 50, 300, yeah, 340, 350 meters per second, if I remember correctly. Um, that's quite fast. And so, effectively, um, the barrel, as soon as it starts to, uh, to deform, will instantaneously collapse. So, let's watch that, because it's kind of fun. The yeah, ordinary oil is 155 gallons. So here you can see the steam coming out. About a liter of water in the bottom of the okay. barrel, heated by the propane. Here, what I will do now is turn the propane off. The propane turn, turn off. off. Now, John, I'm going to put this in the bung hole. This oh, is what, John. Good. That's good. That's, That's the, a bung. That's pretty. the most popular phrase in my house. I can tell you that. Put in the bung. There. Now, John, it looks like a bung wrench. Yeah, but we're always coming over to your house asking for the bung wrench. Sure they are, Mike. Yeah. Sure they are. Uh, it looks like an ordinary bung wrench, John, but when we put the yellow and black tape on it, that is a bung wrench of okay. science. All right. All right, Bill. Into the ice water it's going to go. Okay, so now he's going to lower this okay. into the ice water. It's better if you move quickly. You can hear the ends. The ends are collapsing. Maybe and he's going to roll it, gonna give it a spin. around there to try and cool down the surface of this happen? barrel. I don't know, John. So Boy, just watch closely no here. Now he's cooling down the surface of the barrel, but it's not the barrel that we're interested in, it's what's inside it. And by cooling down the maximum surface of the barrel, you're cooling down the maximum quantity of water vapour inside the barrel and causing it to evaporate, uh, not to evaporate, to, to condense thus reducing the pressure and uh, creating an enormous problem, but enormous, a, a fairly big pressure differential between the outside and the inside. So, the classic demonstration. No! And there we go. Pop. Now, what's happened here is that the, uh, the barrel has imploded, and it's imploded to a situation where it is now once again in equilibrium. Now, there's probably a significant vacuum inside still, but what's left of the structure is now strong enough to withstand the outside water, the outside pressure. And it will perhaps collapse a little bit more later after, after some time, but basically that will collapse slowly. Uh, what's happened here is, is the fast bit where the, uh, the structure effectively ceases to exist. Um, now, this is something that... Uh, your man over here in the baseball cap could have uh, could have talked about and it happens at the speed of sound because the speed of sound is effectively the average speed of molecules in air in this case in the in the surrounding medium and as that barrel collapses that's as fast as the air can move in and the same thing happens underwater um, now, underwater, 
the speed of sound is significantly faster. Um, it's significantly faster. Uh, it is about 1,500 meters per second, so it's about five times faster than in air. So the collapse would be about five times more violent. Now, the Ocean Gate collapse uh, didn't happen like this barrel. The, uh, the object itself didn't retain its integrity and just get a bit smaller. Um, it broke in a very catastrophic manner, which means that all of the air inside it was compressed to the size that it would be if it had been just pushed down to the depth that it was at. So it was at, I think, about 300 atmospheres or thereabouts. So all of the air inside there got about 300 times smaller. Um, during the time that the implosion took place. Um, so, the implosion took place over the period of time that the speed of sound takes to move from one end to the other of the, the submersible. Now, um, speed of sound in air, like I said, about 350 metres per second. Um, the speed of a... 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world. ...is about 370 metres a second, meaning that it's about... Yeah, a couple of metres, a few metres a second above the speed of sound in air. Um, 1,500 metres a second is very, very fast indeed. It's five times faster than the bullet coming from... 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world. And it will definitely blow your head clean off. Um, the amount of time that the implosion took place, I reckon, was something like three milliseconds from starting to actually being over. The implosion was that fast. Um, so if we look at the, the various, uh, you know, all those, all those nice little videos of, you know, the implosion, and there's one that this, this, you know, this man over here, um, no, over there, um, has used in his third video. Um, which is real time, real time, and the implosion appears to be quite fast. It's quite fast, about four or five frames of YouTube, four or five frames of um, of sixty frames a second is um, yeah, it's not three milliseconds. Three milliseconds. I mean, it's liter literally what we're talking about is if you were watching a video of it. One frame, the submersible would be entirely, completely intact. And the next frame, you've got debris. And that's it. I mean, really, that is absolutely it. So fast, you can't even begin to comprehend. Um, Thunderfoot did a video on this, and he talks about... Uh, Rather than pressure, the um, the expansion of water into the space that, that it would have been in once it's compressed, it's, it's exactly the same thing. It's a different way of looking at it, but also equally valid. Um, so, yeah, I think the, uh, the submersible was about five metres long. So, yeah, about three milliseconds from... <laughs> there you go, done. Um, so anyway, that's this uh, that's this tool talking about uh, talking about implosions. He thinks that this is some kind of in now, what's what would be interesting to talk about would be the fact that the implosion would take the same amount of time, regardless of the depth, because we're talking about uh, about the speed of sound in water. Um, the uh, the difference. So if you know, if you happened at if it happened at fifty meters, it would take roughly the same amount of time as it does at you know, four hundred or four thousand meters. Um, it's just that the uh, the remaining space would be compressed that much more. Um, there's a few things that he doesn't cover, which is the fact that as the implosion happens, um, the air that's in there does get heated very rapidly. Um, anything organic effectively becomes diesel fuel. Um, so there is a resulting explosion as well. But... Uh, that's probably far less impressive than the implosion itself. There you go. Um, 
I also watched his third video, which was which was awful. He was talking about rust spots on um, on the carbon. Carbon fibre doesn't rust, buddy. Um, and those rust spots um, were on the outside of the carbon, they were on the inside of the carbon, and they were in between the layers of the carbon. And I think you'll find that those rust spots were most likely not rust spots at all, but... Um, rather like a soylent green, um, which is a bit grim. Anyway, enough of this twat. Um, let's, let's hide him. Bye. Anyway, uh, there's an awful lot of people making an awful lot of money about this. Um, if you want to actually learn something, go and watch some of the uh, some of the stuff that the ocean uh, that the uh, that the Coast Guard put out. The some of some of the some of the interviews, they're, they're on there, they're on YouTube, they're free to access. There's some very, very interesting information about this. Um, I'm rather upset that this guy's just gone for, the, gone for the, the easy option rather than actually talking about what he knows about. Um, I, could, I could talk at length about uh, uh, chairlift rollbacks, for example. You know, I've built chairlifts, I've operated chairlifts, I've done maintenance on chairlifts, I know how they work. And the chairlift rollback disaster in Georgia, for example, that's, that's something I could do a video on. I could possibly give some actual information on. Um, I can't give much real information on uh, that thing. Um, apart from just talking about you know, the relative speed of implosions and stuff. Um, there was some really interesting stuff in the... Uh, that's, that's come out as part of this. I didn't. I didn't realise that they've made the they've made the shell in five layers and glued it together. I don't know why they glued it together with a different glue than the the resin they used to actually make the thing from. Um, that would be an interesting question to ask. Um, I haven't seen anybody really talk about that. Um, I've seen the reasons why they made it in five layers, and that seems to make a certain amount of sense. Um, there's uh, there's the reason why they made the thing from carbon fiber at all. Well, that just seems to be wrong. But anyway, that's uh, that's my take on it. Um, be careful what you're listening to. Oh, I got I got told off. I got told that my attitude was shit for for criticizing this bloke's video. Um, in fact, I'll put up um, a copy of my comment and um, the comments re responding to it, which were fucking hilarious. Some people really need to get a grip when they're busy sucking somebody else's cock for putting out uh, putting out a video that's full of bollocks. Anyway, that's me for the day. See you later.